Hey guys, this is Gulam from Them Tech Guys, and I'm going to show you a quick overview of iOS 6. Uh, iOS 6 was released yesterday here in the UK around 6 p.m., and I didn't get, really get the chance to install it onto my iPhone 4S, as you can see. iPhone 5, on the other hand, is going to have iOS 6 pre installed, which is going to be released tomorrow. And all the features that I'm going to show you now should definitely be on the iPhone 5, and I'm pretty sure iPhone 5 is going to have all the features of iOS 6 whereas the iPhone 4S doesn't. But I'm going to show you a quick overview of the main features that have been that are currently on the iPhone 4S and the iOS 6. The first feature that I'm going to show you right now is the cam uh, the panoramic shot that you can take directly from the camera app. Um, this, this is a new feature that has been added by Apple and um, usually before you require a new app or uh, download an app directly from the App Store to take a panoramic shot. Now, in order to do this, what you're going to do is click on the options buttons at the top and press the panoramic button. Yeah. Now, as you can see from here, Apple has made it very easy to, uh, to take a panoramic shot. It's very easy and very straightforward to understand. What you're going to do is take this snapshot and move the iPhone to the right, as you can see, and have the arrow match the line. Now, obviously, we can, you can press anywhere around the box to uh, move which way you want to go to the left or the right. And I'm going to give you a, a small demo to show you understand how it works. So, as you can see, I press the, I press the snapshot and I'm moving towards the right and I'm trying to match the arrow to the line. I can move it up or down, but I need to get it straight dead on and I don't want to go too fast. And I'm not really that good of a photographer to, uh, <laughs> to give you a really good outcome. So, this is the best I can do, obviously and I'm not that really good and I'm pretty sure you guys can do a lot better than me. So I'm just going to forward and delete this picture and um, I get right back on to the next feature. Here Apple have created their own version of Maps replacing the old Google Maps that was that was pre-installed in the older iOS's. Um, let me just go ahead and launch the app. As you can see um, is really quick uh, in terms of the look it looks very much similar to um, the Google Maps that was installed obviously you can tell by the color it looks completely different and so on if you look at the uh, options at the bottom right that's very similar so that, that no one forget uh, no one has to learn a new app and so on another new feature that added onto this onto this map is the 3d option that's available now um, what this allows you to do is to uh, it allows you to view buildings in 3D, and obviously um, living in the UK, not the whole of London or the whole of the UK is actually covered. Only the centre area that I've shown you, if you can see clearly, only this area here is um, covered. So this part you can actually see in 3D, and I have, I think I do like this. But let's go to a location. As you can see, I'm in Big Ben. I'm at the area of Big Ben and uh, obviously orientating in terms of rotating and so on. This seems to be really easy to use. I don't know why I went to hybrid there for a second. Let me just go back to satellite. And if I activate the 3D, uh, you can see the Big Ben in 3D. Now I'm quite impressed with this actually to see the level of detail that they put into this. Obviously, from the trees, there doesn't really look that good, but for, for a phone, I think this is actually quite impressive. Um, it's really easy to use. Uh, it's quite detailed. <laughs> I do like it, though, even though there's no cars on the road or anything like that. <laughs> Obviously, not all areas are actually covered, like I was mentioning earlier. As you can see from the top above in north, um, it's all flat. Um, if, you, uh, if I zoom in here, as you can see, I'm zoomed, I've zoomed into Trafalgar Square. Um, this is as far as I can zoom in, in terms of to, uh, in terms of changing, tilting the uh, camera or rotating. It's very, very easy to use. Very, very easy to get the grasp of. As I carry on playing around with it. Um, <laughs> Does I really do like this? I really, really do. And if I go further up, um, just wait for it to load. I'm on the Wi Fi, and obviously, yeah, uh, and that's Buckingham Palace up there. <laughs> I do like this, it's a really, really good feature. I'm um, uh, this is really, really snap, really, really fun to use, especially uh, 
uh, I think they've actually did make a really really good app out of this. And another feature that I want to talk about is the nav navigation app that they've added on as well. Now let me put in the uh, postcode of my university that I went to. Um, just bear with me. Um, uh, by hold on one second. Uh, yeah, all right. Let me navigate there now. Oops. See what I went wrong one. Right. Now it would direct me. Uh, give, apart from the warning, it would show me the routes that are available, just like how Google Maps was. And then let me just click route three and start. No, it goes into 3D mode, but obviously I'm not really moving right now, so you can't really see much of it. Um, uh, you can't seem to navigate around the area you're in, or probably you can, but probably zooming in and zooming out, um, you can have an overview. Uh, yeah, and as you see, I'm just having a go. You can have an overview of the uh, of the route that you're taking, and obviously that allows you to plan a different route if you want to, and so on. Um, all in all, I think I'm gonna have to give this another go. I mean, especially when I'm driving around, I I can compare this with uh, the TomTom Tom that I've got right now. I mean, TomTom Tom app. I'm gonna have to download it again and then use it, and um, give you. Or probably I can add this to another video and so on, and say how it actually compares to a proper sat nav system. Well, I'm going to end this and th this is my overview of Google Maps and I, I generally do like this. <sighs>
So, for ex um, yeah, so let's go into Twitter. If I can, eventually, um, I can see you can go into a more detailed view, and and in here they change the look of it, where you have the details, the description below the images. Yeah, that's really good because you can actually have a view of uh, what the app looks like and so on and then obviously the description of the app itself um, most of it seems relatively similar because the, uh, the information of the, everything is relatively the same they haven't really changed much uh, the version history every time there's an update obviously um, uh, they're all given a version number so you know exactly which one's the latest version reviews on the other hand is at the top now <laughs> and as you can see from twitter uh, they have like a really really pa uh, bad reviews no wonder why but anyway that's not the point you have the view of the chart at the top and obviously you can see the different type of views that's uh, viewed the uh, twitter app itself well it could be any app itself but I'm, I'm just talking about twitter in general uh, the related uh, section here is generally just any sort of apps that's related to Twitter, for example, as as, as I was viewing Twitter, um, it can be any app itself, and so on. And it doesn't matter what it is; it can be customers that bought similar to things. So, uh, as you can see from Instagram, they have other types of photography applications or <laughs> games, and uh, that's about it. Um, I think this is going to be quite useful to use. I don't know much people that's going to use it. And obviously, update is update and so on. Another feature that has been added to Mail is another folder called VIP. And what that does is basically it brings all your important messages directly, say from your uh, from your boss or from your friend, whatsoever and so on and basically it'll just sort them into this one small folder um, as you can see from my phone I haven't actually set anything up here and uh, actually I think I should so I can, I can explain a lot easier so um, just bear with me for a second I just added um, another email address or my email address and uh, I'll just show you exactly what I mean so as you can see from the top you have your inbox and um, your VIP and obviously if you scroll up you can finally refresh now, as I was mentioning earlier, you can actually add a VIP, or it could be anyone from your uh, from your boss or your accountant or anything from a very important person. Well, that's what VIP means anyway. Uh, um, all it does is rearranges uh, all your emails into this uh, folder, so it doesn't. It doesn't sort of mix up with all your other for uh, all your other email address, all your other emails that you receive. So it's easier to actually uh, quickly access them and reply back to them. Okay, next callback. Now I want to talk about callback. Um, this is one of the features that I really really like. Whenever you receive a phone call, uh, you can you now have the option to reply with message or remind me later now you can pick either of those when you reply message that means you're letting them know without having to pick them up that you're probably on your way or you call them up or you call you call them later because you're kind of busy or it can remind me later basically yeah it remind you later that you received a call from a friend or, or from this person and so on so I do believe that this little feature would come in handy in our everyday lives that brings me over to another feature which is called do not disturb now do not disturb is I think really really comes in handy especially for those who have a lot of meetings or who want to sleep at night when you get a lot of messages because it does happen it happens to a lot of us now do not disturb is obviously you can have it scheduled by the time from what time so let's just say I'm I've got sleep late so I'll give it say from one o'clock to six o'clock I wake up early as well so <laughs> yeah so that I just want I set up at this time so from this time I don't want to be disturbed so if any of the messages I get don't notify me whatsoever and obviously only allow calls from favorites now that is I think is going to be really important especially say from family emergencies or so on this comes in handy what you can do is uh, as you can see at the bottom I have repeated calls on now what that does is basically anyone from my favorites calls 
if it's an emergency, they'll call, but it won't ring once. But if they ring again, they'll allow the second one, and the second one won't be silent. So I would, I would hear it. So I know that it's an emergency. I would go and I would pick this up. This is a really, really good feature. I really did want one of them because normally what I do is I just switch on to airplane mode and I just basically block everything out as I go to sleep. Sometimes I do that, sometimes I don't, sometimes I just leave it on and just let it carry on. And usually I have to manually switch off, switch the vibration off so that I don't really, so it doesn't really bother me. Having this on, it really, really does save my time. So I genuinely do like this. I really do like this update. Um, uh, I think actually it isn't half bad. It is a good upgrade. Uh, as you can see from the notifications, that they added a uh, tap to tweet, so I can just send a tweet directly from there. Um, um, uh, I don't think I'm going to send a tweet. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just basically talking about it in, in general. Um, yeah, obviously uh, Siri as well. Um, I forgot to mention that. Uh, here in the UK, you can finally search for restaurants nearby. Um, obviously, um, I'm not really going to show you another one. Um, you didn't really understand what I was saying. Anyway, anyway, as I was saying, um, you can find the search for restaurants and so on. And I think that's they should have added that before they've introduced iOS six. Um, so anyway, uh, in my own overall opinion, this update is good. Um, I do recommend people updating. Uh, I will obviously would like a jailbreak version, so I'm gonna definitely wait for uh, a jailbreak to actually be officially released. But if you're looking to upgrade into iOS six, then I really do recommend updating to uh, iOS six. You have you get to have the features that you don't normally have on iOS five, and so on. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, once again, this is Gulan from Them Tech Guys, and hope uh, do follow us on Twitter at Them Tech Guys, and hope I see you soon. Have a good day. Bye.